Well, we're starting a new series in the book of Revelation. And in this video, we'll just be looking at Revelation chapter 1. The sermon I preached from this section, I called, Jesus is with his church now. Revelation is such an important book for us to get our heads around. And it's a very misunderstood and misinterpreted and misapplied book in the Bible. But it is actually here to be an encouragement to us. Uh, someone has said that uh, in Revelation, as a whole book, we see an exalted Christ calls an embattled church to an enduring victory and an eternal kingdom. As a whole, that's what we see in the book of Revelation. We are given this glorious picture of an exalted Christ. He's speaking to his embattled church. He wants to encourage them that his victory is an enduring victory and they are headed to an eternal kingdom. This could be put more simply as Jesus has won. He's with us now. He's coming back. So keep going. That's some of what we'll see in this journey through the whole of Revelation. This first chapter gets us going, and in many ways it focuses in on this, that Jesus is with us now. And we need that firm foundation if we hope to be carried through the rest of this letter of Revelation. Because what is to come is more horrible than you can imagine but it is also more glorious than you can dream. As we begin, I do encourage you just to take some time to read this chapter for yourself. Try and spot some of the repetition that you see in this chapter. Uh, ask some questions about the text, particularly in Revelation. Look out for um, Old Testament allusions. Not illusions, allusions, where the text is alluding to another passage from the Old Testament as someone has said that in the book of Revelation all the Old Testament prophets rendezvous. They come together and find their fulfillment ultimately in this book and we'll see that already here in chapter 1. So take some time to read chapter 1, spend some time praying that you might understand this text and I'm going to take some time just to show you some of what I've seen in this book of Revelation. I want to start by just putting the spotlight on our Lord Jesus in this passage. Uh, Jesus is central in the whole letter of Revelation and he is central in this first chapter and it's worth just uh, seeing um, how much John speaks about him. Now the book of Revelation is falls into a category of writing called apocalyptic and some of the interesting things to note in apocalyptic writing is that it comes from God through an intermediary so here we see uh, God makes this known it's a revelation from Jesus which God has shown him he made it known by sending his angel to John so it comes through an intermediary to um, the who's going to receive this revelation and some of the other interesting things to note is it's full of imagery, um, images, uh, symbols that scare us and numbers and figures that confuse us. And we are confronted by eternal realities as we go through. And something that we see, so it's a revelation and we see these type of words to show you. Um, it's been made known. So something is being revealed, shown, and what it is, is we're being shown what is now and what will take place later. Now that's very important just to take note of as we dig into this. This isn't only talking uh, about the future. It is talking about the future, but it's also talking about the present. It's talking about the world that we are living in at the moment. Uh, we are looking in the book of Revelation at the last days. And these are the days between Jesus' ascension to glory and his return one day to judge. 
the book of Revelation is concerned with this present age, the last days. And with that day, when eternity with Jesus will be ushered in. And so that is the, the time that we're looking at in this book. But not only do we see our Lord Jesus, we also see uh, the Lord God. He's spoken of here as him who was, who is and who was and who is to come. He's God the Father. He's the Lord God. And we see this interesting description from the seven spirits before his throne. Now, seven in Revelation is a picture of completeness. Uh, so we see uh, seven over here as well. Completeness. So when John is writing to the seven churches, it is a symbol for the complete church, the whole church, the church past, present and future, the universal church across the ages. And so when John speaks of the seven spirits, he's talking about the complete spirit. It's John's uh, symbolic way of speaking about the Holy Spirit. So here we see that this is a letter to the whole church from him who was God the Father, the Holy Spirit and Jesus, our triune, our three in one God, is writing a letter to his church to prepare them for what must soon take place. Now this isn't what must soon take place only future, it's what must soon take place now in the present. The time is near. Are you ready? Uh, there's some repetition here on something that needs to be written. Write on a scroll what you see. Write therefore what you've seen, uh, and so we'll see that repetition as well. Write what you see, is look or behold. It's what he saw. He turned to see the voice and he saw. Again, there's this look word, right there for what you've seen. It's not only what he saw, it's also what he heard, so we see some repetition of uh, what he both saw and heard. We see too this repetition of the word of God. There's the surprising vision of seven golden lampstands, and those seven lampstands are explained right at the end of this first chapter. We also see the seven stars uh, in his right hand. Is a repetition of something that needs to be uh, testified to. Now a really helpful thing uh, throughout uh, Revelation, a letter like this, is to look out for just important grammar, so uh, changes of tense, or looking for verbs that are commands, so imperatives, and in this uh, opening section there are a number of imperatives. So we've got an imperative here, look or behold, two imperatives here, a write and send, a very important imperative here, do not be afraid, and then a repetition of this write, we saw a moment ago, and of this look that we've seen already. Now all of those imperatives, so behold, He's coming. Write what you see. Send it to the churches. Don't be afraid. Behold, I'm alive. Write what you've seen. The alive and coming soon one says, don't be afraid. Now, as we look at uh, this image here, John is wanting us to get a very, very big view of our Lord Jesus. He starts already here by, by speaking of Jesus, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kingdoms of the earth, the one who's loved us and freed us and made us so that we might serve him. So already there he's giving this big view of Jesus. But as we continue through, we get to this section here, where as soon as we see this statement, the Son of Man, um, our Old Testament knowledge points us to Daniel 7, where we see the Son of Man. 
approaching the Ancient of Days. And there in Daniel 7, uh, we see that the Ancient of Days has hair as white as snow. The interesting thing here is that the Son of Man himself is explained to look like the Ancient of Days. He is the one with this authority to judge. He is glorious beyond compare. And the picture that is painted here is terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying because this uh, Son of Man with eyes that are piercing, uh, the, the white hair is a picture of all knowing. He has all the wisdom. He can see everything. Uh, he is, no one can stand against him with his bronze feet. And he's ready to judge. Uh, because coming out of his mouth is this sharp double-edged sword. It is an absolutely terrifying picture. So it's understandable that John fell as though dead. But then this glorified, magnificent, terrifying Jesus says, don't be afraid. Now, these are words of the gospel that we, we see throughout um, God's word. And when Jesus says to his followers, don't be afraid, it is very, very good news indeed. And here, the glorified Jesus is saying to John, don't be afraid. Now, John had every reason to be afraid because here in chapter, in verse 9, we see that he talks about suffering and patient endurance. And he says that he was on Patmos, which was an, a prison island, like our Robben Island in Cape Town. Patmos was where political prisoners were sent. So he was suffering for the gospel and he was uh, a companion in patient endurance because of the word of God and his testimony of Jesus. And here he is needing encouragement. And so the glorified Jesus appeared to him and said, don't be afraid. And the real wonder of this is that John didn't need to be afraid of death because the living one had conquered death. He held the keys to death and Hades. And even better than that, this living one was among the lampstands. Because here he says the golden lampstands are the seven churches, so the complete church. And in verse 13, we see among the lampstands was someone like a son of man. John was given this picture of the glorified Jesus amongst his church. In their midst, this is a present reality. It's not only a future hope, it's a present reality. And this was meant to encourage John. Do not fear, because Jesus is with you now. He's among his people. The living one is with you. And this is the foundation that John lays, because this is what we need if we're going to cope with what comes in the rest of this letter. Because the judgment that we see is more horrible than can be imagined. But also, the future that is described is more glorious than we could ever hope or dream. And we need this foundation of knowing that the Son of Man is among the lampstands. He is with us. So we have nothing to fear in an ultimate sense because Jesus has won. He's with us now. What we're going to see in the book is that he's coming again so we can keep going. The exalted Christ is going to call an embattled church to an enduring victory and an eternal kingdom. And in this passage, he starts by saying, don't be afraid. I'm with you. I'm with you in your suffering. I will help you endure. I am coming with the clouds. I'm coming to judge. But I'm also coming to take my people home. So don't be afraid. Now, as we dig into this, this is a truth that we need in our world because we are also uh, suffering. We need patient endurance. So this is a truth that we need today that's going to help us to keep going until that day when Jesus does return. Jesus is with his church now. So do not be afraid. Well, God bless as you dig into this opening chapter. First, what we're going to see in chapters 2 and 3 is these seven stars he speaks about being the angels to the seven churches. This exalted, glorified Jesus is going to write a letter 
to the churches and it's the application of the whole of Revelation. It's very important and we'll look at that in the next video. Well, God bless as you dig in further.